Hi everyone, Sarah Picaro, Rapid Transformational Therapist. I love sharing information with you and taking you on the journey to healing from within after having been in a toxic and unhealthy relationship. And my first experience with this, I was completely blindsided, really young, just still in college and had no idea. I had no idea what I was getting into, no idea that I was walking into a life-changing relationship with a narcissist. And there are different kinds of narcissists. My first experience with one was a covert narcissist. And the signs are very, very different. I've had experiences with all kinds, with the overt, in your face, there is no doubt, no second guessing, this person's a narcissist. And then an experience with a covert one. Covert ones can be considered or called a wolf in sheep's clothing. So that means that they are very uh, much in disguise. So it's so much more difficult to see the signs at first, especially if it's your first experience with narcissism, because coverts are much more dangerous than these overt narcissists because they understand and are experts at hiding their narcissism in a way that the overts don't. The overts, they're flamboyant, they talk about themselves all the time, they're grandiose, like it is very clear and evident that they feel that they're superior to you. But these coverts, they're, they're much more undercover and sneaky and shy and quiet about it. So you'll notice that these are the kind of people that are just quiet, they're shy, they don't say much, uh, but they're very good at getting you to feel sorry for them to pity them. Uh, they're very, very good at acting and playing the role of victim, which all narcissists do, but these coverts are much more shy and much more prone to acting like the victim. And it's really an underhanded kind of stealth kind of way. Uh, they're not coming in hot like this hot jet right off the runway, like an overt, but they're coming in quiet, shy, taking their time much more slowly. Uh, so they're not as talkative as the overts, they don't seem to possess this level of confidence that these overt narcissists do. And that's why sometimes it's like, I don't know, are they a narcissist? They're not this like, ah, in your face all the time, but they are expert liars. They're expert manipulators. And you'll notice that they have this emptiness to them. In the first relationship with a covert narcissist, I always felt that. You have this feeling that something's missing, something's off, you just quite can't put your finger on it. With an overt narcissist, my experience with them is they're very open about it. You know, they get you to buy into this sob story and generally it is a very sad story about what happened to them, their childhood trauma, their childhood abuse, and you think, oh my gosh, you're such an amazing person. Let me love you and let me show you how amazing you are and I'm going to stick around and love you. Culprits don't do that as, as often. They just have this emptiness to their soul. I, I can look back on pictures and see just this black eyes, this emptiness and the something that was there, even just the look that they give you. Like it feels like it crushes your soul. So you'll notice covert narcissism is the one of the more difficult types of narcissism to spot. It's the one where uh, the person in the relationship, the victim or the, the other person, myself in this example, stayed a lot longer because you don't quite see or know what's happening. You just you know there's no empathy, you know there's no uh, emotional connection or response, it's still very much about them, but they hook in very codependent people, they hook in highly empathetic people with their sob stories, with this victim-like mentality, but they're just not so in your face about it. And over time, the victims, the people with them, take on this sense of responsibility, and before you know it, you're trapped. You're in this abusive relationship because this covert narcissist, just like the overts have done, make you question your reality, and they will never, ever be held accountable. I remember living in gorgeous homes, having everything that you could ever want, all the toys, all the cars, all the homes. Uh, we were called the Joneses. I mean, we were this gorgeous couple. We seemed to have everything. And I felt like the drive home from wherever I was, was driving back to prison, to a cell. Like it, it seriously felt like I was on lockdown with this person. I didn't know who I was. I couldn't be who I felt like I should have been, uh, and I 
couldn't figure it out. I didn't know why I constantly had this feeling, but it was very much the mental and emotional abuse from the covert narcissist from that relationship. Uh, they get you to feel bad for them, uh, that, and the sense that you want to help them, you feel sorry for them, uh, you feel that you always will have this feeling that you're just not good enough. And you will go to any lengths to rescue them, to please them, to change yourself, to be who they say that they want you to be because when you become that person, then you're good enough and then the problems of the relationship will disappear. That's not true. But you'll notice these covert narcissists, they blend into the background much more, kind of that wallflower. And that is they're very, very, very passive aggressive with their abuse. Um, they're quite quiet in the relationship, uh, which makes it really difficult because they act like they're the victim and all these things were done to them. And you're part of having these things done to them because they're just the perfect partner. And if anything is wrong in the relationship, it's because of you. It has nothing to do with them. I remember uh, expressing this feeling of our, our relationship just not, not working out, not being happy, and, and asking, can we go to counseling? Can we go to therapy? And his response was, I mean, you can, because clearly you have some things you need to work on. I don't, I'm just fine. And if you need to go, sure. We went once together to have him show that he was supporting me and sat there, rubbed my back the whole time. I just love her so much. I would do anything for her. Clearly, that's why I'm here. I want her to get better. She needs to get better. She needs to figure this out. And I just sat there thinking, are you kidding me? Wow. Like the, the manipulation with the counselor, with the therapist, they will always put this front on that they're perfect and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them i'm sorry there's not a single person walking around on this planet who's perfect there's no such thing but they make you feel that way and then by doing that they're taking the victim role so you may notice if you've been with a covert narcissist it's much more difficult you question things a lot more because it's not so in your face uh, so just remember that this wolf in sheep's clothing this feeling that you're not good enough you should never ever be in a relationship where you feel that you're not good enough because you are and if this person is constantly putting you in a position where you question that it's not a healthy relationship so hopefully this video shines some light on the difference and maybe explains more about a covert narcissist is versus the overt which is a lot easier to understand uh, they're both coming from a very shattered place very small egos and them themselves feeling like they're not good enough and projecting that all onto you and everyone else in their world to get things done for them and have them avoid taking any kind of responsibility for themselves they're perfect right so thank you guys for tuning in and I hope that this shines some light on covert narcissism versus the other forms that are out there. And please reach out. This is exactly what we work on healing. This rapid transformational therapy really gets to those inner wounds that you have so that you can heal from with them. I like to describe it as you have this wound that was there much longer, much much earlier than this relationship. This relationship has shown to you exactly what it is that you need to work on and heal from yourself, but they take this giant Morton thing of salt and pour it into all your wounds and it hurts. So obviously getting out of the relationship, going no contact with them if you can, and then work on healing those wounds within. So there's simply just a scar left. You pour salt on a scar, it's not gonna sting or burn the way that it does if you pour salt into a wound. So doing the work to heal after having been in a, a relationship with a narcissist or toxic and unhealthy person really is about healing from within so that you're left with a scar and not an open wound that they pour salt into. So that's my nail, Jay, I like to share it and I hope that helps you guys maybe make sense of what you're processing or experiencing or on your journey to healing from. And I'd love to be a part of that journey if you wanna reach out and connect. Uh, send me a message or you can click on the banner and it'll pop up with my calendar and schedule a time for us to talk. Thank you guys.